Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm back to my art journal again. So, I've heard from lots of you that you really like it when I talk about my life and things that I've done and my journey, but I'm not going to dictate my entire life story in all of my videos. However, I thought that with my art journal and probably my collage glue book, I will pull in bits of my experiences and tell you about them as I create and use them as inspiration. So. Um, as you've seen, I mean, where's the, where's the first one? Oh, there you go. There's, there's the other one I did. You all love that. So you know that the pages start like this. Well, I've already put white gesso on this and I've sponged it on um, just so I get a little bit of a texture to it. And I want to start working on this. And this time I want to share with you, basically, I've got several places in the world that I absolutely love. One is Australia. One is Chicago and one is Alaska. I've been to Alaska like 14 times in my life. I'm so lucky to have worked in a cruise ship industry, which went to Alaska. I always opted for contracts that did it. And I love Alaska and I'm going to go back there one year, probably in 2023. If plans go to plan, I'm going to take a cruise to celebrate my 60th, which was a couple of years ago. It got postponed because of COVID. So anyway, this is going to be that spread. So I want to start out by laying a little bit of background on here and then this is going to be one of those videos where I'm going to have to stop, let it dry and come back to you. So this is where we're starting. Right, the first thing I want to do is I want to put down, um, how do I word this, a slightly almost colourful, magical sort of background. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use brush shows. Now brush shows are this product here. Hopefully that's focused on that because as you know, I can't see through the iPad. Um, so brushes, but what I do is I take the brushes and I put them into these things. Now these are actually glitter shakers, which I buy because I find them easier to store and easier to use. I usually write what they are on there and I do a little colour dot and stick it on the top so I can find them easily. I like doing this. I find this far more satisfactory than the old way, which was putting a pinhole and tapping it through. The only thing you do have to be aware of, however, is because of the size of the holes, a little tap goes a long, long way. So first of all, I want to build a little bit of this. Now for me, Alaska is all about greenery and blue and cold and, and wildlife. It's just all about wildlife. And I find the people in Alaska um, to be very grounded, to be very in contact with who they are and where they are. And I, I just love that. So. Anyway, that's that's just my input. So I'm pulling in a couple of colours. I'm pulling in yellow, leaf green and turquoise. Um, I'm going to put some of that down and then when that's dry, I've got stenciling. I've got pieces to put on there. And we'll talk through that as we go along. Um, so I've just got, why well, am I shaking water? I always do that. I always shake water. So I'm just going to spritz my page just with the lightest amount of water because I want what I sprinkle on here to stay on here and then I'll re-sprinkle it. So I'm going to use the turquoise first because turquoise to me reminds me of um, glaciers and stuff like that because if you've ever seen the ice blue of a glacier, believe me, it it is breathtakingly stunning. Um, green, as I said, oh, don't take the whole lid off, Griffiths. Green is another colour because because of the moisture content in Alaska, because of the snow and everything, you've got you've got greenery. Now I'm tending to leave this area without, purely because I've got an idea that I'm going to try. Could ruin my page, but you know, nothing gained if you don't don't try new things. You never know. So I'm looking for just little splashes of something down here. After this is dried, because it will dry a little paler, I might actually put into it some. Um, white over the top to knock it back because these these are very very potent actually what's that color there that's purple i think i put a bit of purple in here to oops and my little dot fell off i'll be sticking that back on in a minute um yeah uh the colors in brush shows are very heavily they're a strong pigment so a little bit goes an incredibly long way and stick that to one side just remember to stick that one finished. Okay, so they're on the page. Now this is where the magic happens. So if I just spritz this with water, as you can see, it all comes to life. Now, I'm using quite a bit of water because I want it to move around. My pages are gonna be fine because of course I prepped them with gesso. Although there is a point at which I'm not gonna saturate it so much 
that everything is soaking wet and I can never actually get it to move around. So as you can see, I just I just love the effect. And I want that sort of wishy-washy water flowing. It it'll all make sense when it's all finished, but I'm going to really make sure I move this around, but not muddy it up too much, and then I'm immediately going to come in and take some of it back off with my kitchen towel or kitchen paper, whichever country you're in. And as you can see, that's really knocked that back. I'm going to, because there are grains here, I can go in and reactivate anywhere that looks like it's got um, more of the pigment crystals on it. You got that to run in a bit because I want the water flowing on this one. So now the more you add, the more intense it's going to be. Also, um, you can build this up in layers, but know that that um, brush shows are going to be activated every time you add water. So just be aware of that for future. I mean, if you put in wet mediums over the top, which I'm going to, just be aware that there's going to be movement of whatever you've got on this. So come in, I'm just going to roll across the top. I wanted a delicate feel to the page, and I've got it. I'm not sure, even sure that it picked it up. But I do have some on there. I quite like the way that looks. I think I want to add a little more marine blue to this. Well, not a little more, add some marine blue to this because I just want a little bit more of that colour in there. Just almost more ocean type colours. What's wrong with my dot? My dot came off again. I guess Art Glitter Glue doesn't like plastic on plastic. I'll be using my Fabri-Tac. So just again building up this, getting it all to move. I love brushes. They're kind of magic. Now there are other products out there similar to brushes. Um, they're like really intense particle paints or colours. I don't know how to describe them. Um, there are some wonderful things you can do with it. I'm just taking that out the middle because I don't want it saturating through. This is kind of where I'm going on this. I want some sort of movement. I think this needs a little more over here. And there will be collage on this, there will be other stuff on this, so I know that over time there's going to be a build-up of stuff. I think if I just take that out of the central crease and then while that's drying or drying off, then we can have a chat about the other elements I'm going to put into this. So Let's pull that down a bit. So yes, Alaska for me is just, it's it's a land of true nature as far as I was concerned. I mean, I haven't been there in probably about 20 years now. So I'm hoping the advancement of time and man and technology hasn't spoiled it for me. But you never know. So right, we're going to stop that there. No more water on this page. I'm going to let this... Just dab off some of the white areas because I don't need those to be wet because they don't need to be. So that's given me a base layer. Now we're going to come back to that in a while, but I'm going to leave it sat there while I'm chatting anyway. A little bit of a clean up. So let's talk about the things or show you the things I actually want to use. Um, first of all, I want a compass on here because a compass to me represents travel. So I've got a rubber stamp. Um, this one is... This was from Hobbycraft, which is probably the same as Hobby Lobby in America. Um, it's just a really nice uh, north, south, east, west compass stamp. Really liked it. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to have one of those on the page because to me that will represent travel. Um, I stamped it on tissue paper because then when I actually do collage or matte medium it onto the page, it'll disappear into the background except for the stamping. And therefore, I don't mess up the page because I've actually stamped it first. Um, something else that needs to be on there to me because the reason I was in Alaska was um, as an entertainer music played a big part so I'm going to put some music on here as well just the odd strip just to carry and connect that's what I want to do with that um, I found this piece of rice paper which is from Stamperia and I have lots of experiences of seeing whales in the wild um, Hearing them, I was in a boat next to one. I mean, for me, whales and the fact I come from Wales has nothing to do whatsoever. But I absolutely, I love whales. They are just. I don't think you will ever experience how large a whale is until you actually stood next to a whale. I know it sounds a bit weird because we all know they're huge, but really, 
they are really, really huge. So I'm going to have that on the page as well. Um, something that I do remember from sailing out of Victoria or Vancouver up through the Inside Passage was there were lots of islands with homes on. Now I don't really want, I don't really want the lighthouse in it, but I liked this idea because if I put this on the page, it's almost as if this is one of the little homes that's actually on an island on the Inside Passage. Now I'm not going to use all of this darkness here, so I'm going to be tearing that off. This will go into my scrap box because this bit on its own will become something else texturally, visually texture in the future. Let's put that to one side. I'm going to tear this down as well. So as you can see, I'm taking out elements. I'm going to try and take the lighthouse out so I haven't killed the image, which I don't think I will have done. Let's put that to one side. So there you go. For me, that will just represent um, the little houses on the island. They're fascinating. You'll, you'll, if you do one of those Alaskan cruises, one of the first day out of Vancouver or Victoria, you will see all these little islands or what are they called? Oh, I can't remember the name for them. Anyway, um, and you'll see these little houses. And I was always so envious. I was like, I could live on an island in the middle of the Inside Passage or whatever the the, the sound. Of, is it Puget Sound or something? I don't know. Anyway, anyway, out of it. I love that. Um, another thing that's really relevant when you go to Alaska is eagles. And also the whole Inuit um, art style there. Now this is actually just, um, it's a cross stitch pattern. It was the only thing I could find that had an eagle on and had a bit of the artwork on. This was created by someone called Sue Collins. I know she does lots of Alaskan art or she did when I was there anyway. So this is going on my page pretty much up by there because I want it to overlook the whole scene. Uh, what else are we doing? Um, I also have this um, stencil that I recently was received from PM Artist Studios. And if you look at my product reviews, you'll know all about them. And this is this is who PM Artist Studios are, and this is one of theirs. And what I liked about this one for this art piece is, although it's not exactly that sort of style, it gives the impression of that sort of style. And I liked the thought of adding that down. Without this looking like a Greek key, I thought if I use this as elements, it might just bring that in with this. So I'm going to play with that idea. This is quite damp. Um, I think I'm going to pause you, hit this with the hairdryer, and then come back to it, and then I can start building. So bear with me, guys. Back in a second. So here we are back again. It's dry to the touch. I mean, I'm sure it's not dry all the way to the core. In fact, I know it's not all dry, dry all the way to the core. Um, some of these bubbling where I actually got the paper wet never bothers me. I don't worry. One thing that has happened is where I had it clogged in the middle. It's opened the page up where I put something down the middle again. I don't mind about that. That's fine. It's my art journal. It's not a gift for anyone. It's something that I'm using. So first of all, I'm going to pull in. I use a ceramic tile as a paint palette. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use this is the mixed media um, matte medium. Sorry, I use and I'm going to use that with just a regular paintbrush just to put stuff down. And the first thing I want to do is I want to put the eagle into place. Now, the eagle for me is incredibly powerful creature. It completely and utterly signifies Alaska. Um, for me, it was just, I have magic moments remembering remembering eagles. I remember one, one day I was on the back of the ship. I want to say we were in Ketchikan, to be honest with you. I'm absolutely certain we were in Ketchikan. And I was, I was on the boat. I hadn't gone, hadn't gone ashore that day. And I was on the back deck, quite high up, looking out. And I remember looking to my left and not maybe, oh, good grief, five feet, maybe six feet away from me. Um, an eagle rose up, up next to the handrail. So it must have been catching the updrift up, up the side of the ship. And it was just, it was eye level with me. And it was absolutely, to see this stunning creature, this whole symbol of Alaska for me. Um, was just absolutely mesmerizing and it was there a while it was just hovering looking at the world regarding its way around and I absolutely loved it it was just it was a privilege to see it absolutely a privilege 
So I just want to smooth this down to make sure I get all of the air bubbles out. Now, one thing I did mention before, but we're going to have to remind ourselves as we go along, is the crystals in this, unless I paint anything over the top of brush hose, those crystals are going to be reactivated by any moisture that's put in contact with this. And I don't mind that. I really don't mind that at all. Um, it'll all add to it. I mean, I can see I've probably just dragged a little bit of blue through there. So let's see if I can just take a little bit of moisture and take that off. There you go. It's all gone. So, yes, I could go in and I could seal the whole thing. But you know what? I'm not worrying. I like the idea. For me, Alaska is all about the mixing and it's, it's all about atmosphere. And this to me is just all about atmosphere. I absolutely love this. Right. I think I want to put in my island. Now, I sort of kind of want that there, I think. I'm wondering whether that actually needs to be there. I don't think I want that bit there. Let's take that little house off. Sorry, little house, you're gone. Um, I quite like the idea of that. I'm sorry that I'm going to cover up Sue Coleman, but again, I don't mind. That's that's what it needs to be, and that's where it needs to be, in my, my opinion. So just putting that on. I just like the placement of that. So let's put this down with some gel medium. Sorry, I'm just, I'm a bit distant because I'm sort of kind of remembering the place now. It's just, I do miss Alaska. I can't wait to go back. I was, I was a bit upset, but then, you know, there were big issues at the time. Um, I had plans to go on a 60th cruise and there were, 20 I think was it 20 might have been 20 of our friends who were all going to meet up on the cruise to help me celebrate and obviously that never happened um but it, it would have been lovely but you know what it's fine because now that can't happen as a group I'm going to make it happen myself next year anyway so there you go so I've got the island on there what else do I need to put on here that I wanted to put on here um I wanted to add the whales, and I think the whales, I naturally work in balance. Um, many of you have commented on how I naturally seem to balance both shapes and colours. Um, I am lucky. I, I, I was born with a, with a gift. I know that. Um, however, I also know that the more you do something, the more you're able to do. And I was going to add music onto this, so I need to consider where I want that now. Um, just want to play around for a second, guys, just to just to let let my brain think. I don't I don't want the music to be dominant, but I do want the music on the page. So let's take that bit off there. Quite like that bit down there. I also don't mind up and down music, but I feel that. Because I'm thinking water and skylines and hor horizons. To me, I'm feeling this is more a horizontal build. Now, I kind of know what I want to put up there. So I want to make sure that... Hmm, tricky. Or maybe just a little bit of that. I don't mind that. There's going to be more on this page. We know that. And maybe a little bit over there. I think that works right. Take this away from me, people, because if you don't, I'm going to keep adding stuff. Because that's the way my brain works. So, right, let's put this down. Now, I'm expecting the paper to ripple because obviously it's not art paper. It's music paper. Should put that over a little bit more, actually. Um, so I am expecting it to ripple. Do I care? No, I don't. It's it's actually another layer of texture in my mind. So what I have done with this one, however, is I actually put, um, what's it called? I put gesso, clear gesso over the top of that before I stuck it down because I really didn't want that picture distorted. But I usually find if I'm doing pages and gluing them down with a wet medium I normally find that by the time I go back to them and they've dried a lot of the texture has actually just dried back out of them now I'm hoping 
as you can see, to pull in some of that so this isn't going to be so white white. I mean, there's going to be other things on this page, I can absolutely assure you. Let's pull that in. I don't mind the top being whiter. I just don't need everything white white. So, yeah, there were so many things in Alaska I wanted to put onto this page. And I had to go, right, you just need to remember the essentials. I have a feeling this won't be my last Alaskan one. It's just... And there are certain things I can never, ever, ever capture, like um, being in Glacier Bay and, and hearing the ice crack before it carves off. It's just, I love that. It was just, everything about it just, I don't know, it just, it sends me. I know I sound a bit, oh, I'm being part of the tourism board, but it's, it was just magical. Absolutely. Alaska was just phenomenal. And... I think I like this colour actually. What do I want? Ooh, decisional colours. I think I want black. Um, and as I've said, the one thing that I really loved about Alaska, um, there was a really large um, arts and crafts, handmade feel to it. Um, I remember going into shops and seeing. Um, quilts that had been made locally and they were breathtaking pieces of art it was just if I was a younger man and I could find a way I I would move to Alaska just to be part of that whole grounded grounded community I think is the way I want to word this um, now there is industry there there's fishing industry um, I know there's a military base I want to say that to catch a can um, there's industry, there's ports, there's there's commerce, there's, I mean, it's not the back of beyond, it's it's not the middle of nowhere. Um, getting to it can sometimes be a little challenging, depends on the time of year you go. However, it's it's not a barren land, it's, it's a very productive land. Um, and I know the other thing that's going to be said to me in the comments is... Um, it's lovely in certain seasons, but you've never been there when it's winter. And they are very right. Um, I do know quite a lot of people will actually live in Alaska through the summertime, but then move to Seattle to another home they may have um, for the winter because the winter is just so brutal. But there are some who stay. I mean, I think if you've got a good supply of books and you've got a good supply of firewood and food and water, then I'm fine. I'm quite happy to stay in Alaska, I can tell you. Right, is there anything else that needs to be stuck onto this page? Now, I'm looking down here and I'm wondering whether I actually want to take a bit of this darkness and add it here to carry that design across. Is that the wrong way up? It is the wrong way up. Well, there you go. Maybe... maybe Yes, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to, there's kind of a natural tear in the design there. And I think if I bring that all the way across, there you go. Do you see where I'm going with this? Maybe even take it to there so that, so what else do I remember about Alaska? Um, I remember kayaking. And it's a whole new world, kayaking in Alaska, I can tell you. I can't remember where I was kayaking out of. And I spent most of the day in a kayak on the surface of the water. Um, obviously, because you don't float, do you? Um, and it was just not knowing whether a whale or an orca was going to surface next to you. Um, and things like, I mean, I've never seen jellyfish so large as I saw in Alaska. These these Alaskan jellyfish are huge and they they were red. I didn't remember them being red. And they used to gather around the docks and the columns of where we used to um, tie up the ship. And when I went actually kayaking to be next to them, these things were massive. I mean, it's hard to judge the size of something when you're stood on the deck of a ship and you're at least at least 20 or 30 feet, if not higher, above the surface. And to actually see it, it's just, oh my word. Now, where do I put the other bit? I had another bit of that, didn't I? 
I'm now wondering whether I want to take this down here as well. And I think I do. This seems to be grounding me down here and I like that idea. And it goes over the top of the music, which is also good because that, that knocks the music back a little bit. Not that it needs to knock him back, but it does knock it back a little bit. Um, what else did I see? I, oh, I, there were ultimate photographs you wanted to get when you went to Alaska. And this was like the aim of all the tourists and the crew, may I add. You always wanted to get a photograph or a little bit of footage of when the side of a glacier carved off. And it is amazing. I mean, when you're on the ship, it doesn't look that huge. But then when you see the seagulls and wildlife near them, these things are like the size of skyscrapers falling off the side of this. And the colour, I can never ever... The, the ice blue turquoise colour of a glacier is absolutely breathtaking. It's amazing. Um, and the other photograph everyone wants to get is of a whale diving. So they got the tail in the air. Well, I can tell you now, guys, I went 14 years to Alaska. And I think I only ever saw that twice and I only ever got one photograph. And please don't ask me to share it because I have no idea amongst all of the photographs I've got where that photograph actually is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and let this dry or try and dry it a bit more. And then I can come in and we can start doing the modelling paste stuff down it. And while the modelling paste stuff is being done, I can then try and do what I think I want to do here, which is another bit of magic. Um, but we'll see. So bear with me, guys. I'm going to be gone for a little while while I dry this. It's going to be mere probably two seconds. because I think that's how long the transition is from one video to the other. And I'll be back in a moment. Take care. So here I am back again. I've got it dry enough to the touch. As I said, it's not core dry, like all the way through, but it's certainly dry enough for me, I think, to put the modelling paste on. And the reason I want to do that now is because I like to leave my modelling paste overnight to dry fully, so I'm going to have to finish filming this tomorrow morning. And I do that purely because if you use a heat gun on some modelling paste, you'll find they bubble. And I, I don't want this to bubble, so I just want to make sure I do it the way I want to do it. Now, this, as I said, is a stencil from PM Artist Studios. Um, I don't know that there's actually a name for this stencil. I think it's it's just a stencil of a scent, and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to use that down in that corner. I'm going to use a little bit of book page. I'm going to use that to protect my page itself, because I want this running down the side. Um, I will try and endeavour to put the link to PM Artist Studios in my um, description box, which is in that corner. There's a little V, or sometimes it says see more or read more. Um, this is the modelling paste I'm using. It's just, just a modelling paste that I use because it's readily available to me. I mean, I was actually considering using a grit texture paste by Tim Holtz, but I think it would have been too much. Let's get that onto the edge of that page again. If I wasn't being lazy, I'd actually tape this in place so it didn't move around. But I think, I think I'm willing to take the risk. So all I'm doing is I'm putting the paste down and pressing it gently down and moving all the way down the stencil just to give it a bit of texture on the edge of this page. Something on this blade always tends to leave a mark. If you ever have a plastic tool by the way like this and it leaves a mark on something you can always go in with a bit of an emery board and scrape it off. Um, sand it off. So I'm going to grab another one because that line there although you probably can't see it is going to bug the out of me I can tell you. Right take that up carefully. Yes that's exactly what I was hoping to do. Right I want to do one more bit over here. How much of it do I want? Actually, I don't mind all of it. Sorry, having a thoughtful moment yet again. Right, I'm going to slide that back under there because I want, I want to protect the rest of my page. So hopefully that's in the right place. Right, let's pull that jar in, hold it again, my fingers, and cross your fingers for me that I, I don't mess this up. So I'll be upset if I do. Now I could have done this with paint. 
I could have actually taken this white modeling paste and actually colored it up with a bit of acrylic if I wanted to. Um, but I didn't want to. I, I like the idea of it's white. Um, if it needs to represent anything, maybe the white represents the snow and ice of Alaska. That's not what I'm intending, but it could be something to be interpreted. I love that. How beautiful is that? Right, let's lift that out of the way. Let's lift that off. I'm going to clean these off in a second when, when we're done with all of that. So I must remember this is the one that needs sanding down. Um, do I want anything else on there texturally? I don't think I do at the moment. If I do, it will probably be here somewhere and I'll put it on afterwards. So I know that was a little brief snippet, but you needed to see that done. If anything down here would do with something. But if I put something there, it sort of blocks eagle view. I know that's just me being a bit weird, but that's the way my brain thinks. I could, however, just do a couple there, maybe. I've got something planned for there and I don't want to... Hmm, I'm just going to stick something there. And let's just pray this works. As I've always said, it doesn't have to be perfect. If anything, imperfect is a lot more interesting than perfect. Although, the way my brain works, anything that's not perfect is wrong, which I struggle with, as you know. Right, now I knew that was going to do that because I'm dealing with a curve of a book. So I'm not worried about that. I'm going to come in now and I'm just going to tidy up that end. There you go. No harm, no foul. Just tidy that up. I just wanted a little something just to give me... You don't have to do things in threes, guys. Um, I do. Not have to, but I do. Because I think it's aesthetically better looking. Sorry, I can't talk and concentrate. So, right, I've got bits on there. I like... I've got something planned for there, which we'll come back to. Right, I truly do think now... I need to stop for the day. I'll leave this sat out. Hopefully when I set the camera up to continue videoing in the morning, it'll be in about the same place. I'm not gonna move anything, so let's just cross our fingers I can do that. And then when we come back, we will actually then finish off the element I want in there. I want to put some pieces into this that aren't yet on there. Not sticking down, just elements that need to be in this, but this is already going in the direction I'm really loving. I've got that vibrancy of blue, which to me, speaks of glaciers and cold dark waters. I've got the small island homes that I absolutely love. I've got the eagle, I've got the Inuit, I've got this as a, as a hint at that sort of life or art style. I've got the compass for my travels. I've got the whales because whales are very special to me. I love them. I've seen them umpteen times in real life. I love that. I like I like the idea of what's going on. I can't wait to tell you what that is. But we're going to cross our fingers because I completely not utterly mess it up. And if I do, I will cover it with something because no one's going to know except you and me. Okay, so back in a few seconds for you, for me. I'll be back to this tomorrow morning. Bye. Well, good morning, guys. It's the next morning for me. It's obviously just like two seconds for you. Um, Everything is nice and dry. I've retested it. It looks like everything's still in screen for you guys, which I'm happy about. Okay, um... There's a couple of things I need to do to this before we have another little bit of drying time. Um, but when I was looking at this this morning, there's a couple of things I think I've missed um, and need to alter or change or add to. Um, this is looking very, very the feel of Alaska to me, but there's something missing and that's this colour because that's like the colour of the eagle, it's the colour of the trees, it's the colour of the earth, it's... The earth in Alaska, the places I've been, because there's lots of forest forestry there, it's a very rich, loamy type soil. So I had a dig through and I found this piece of tissue, which I think if I just add the odd little element of this into the mix, it will make me happier. Something else I noticed that this sweeps beautifully up here, but this looks a bit barren. So I think I want to add just a little bit more of these colours 
up here and let them drip or just spread within that. Only a touch though and then we'll address this and I think I may have put that in the wrong place but I'll explain why when we look at it next. So I want to add a couple of pieces of this into it so I'm thinking down here kind of works for me so let's just take this. This is just packaging, um, packaging what am I saying? This is just uh, gift wrap, that's the word I'm looking for. So I just want to add something down this side. Just maybe that's a bit too much. Just as a hint of and just to pull the colour across and give it a bit of balance and I think for what I'm thinking that might work although I think I want it even smaller to be honest with you. It just felt it was missing something and I think this is possibly it. It's funny because a lot of the time I won't know until I stick it down. Um, I just won't know. I mean, but I do like that. And that means I'd, I'd like a piece down here. Almost, I don't do it on purpose, but things sort of triangulate for me. Um, like music, music, music. Stencil, stencil, stencil. Earth, earth, earth. It's, it's just the way my brain functions. Um, and I don't even know that I can't say it's intentional because I, I don't think I intend it. It just it just happens. So I'm just going to pull a bit of this in. Now, do I worry that that's a straight line? I don't want to go across the crease because it's opened up, not crease, the, the spine. So I think I might just give it a bit of a tapered edge if I can actually do this. So, so yes, I looked at this last night and I looked at it again this morning and I like the direction it's going in. Um, however, I just needed a few things put into it. It was just, I think once you're trying to do this sort of thing on camera, you will, if you ever do it on camera, of course, I'm going to just put some matte medium out because that's what I'm going to stick this down with. Um, you will find the problem is that you don't really have time to let what you're creating sink in um, or marinate or steep or settle or whatever you wish to call it. It just, everything is such a here and now and has to be done um, because we're all on a time constraint with our camera. Um, but for me, I, I don't have thinking time or I don't let it seep into my mind until afterwards and then sometimes I'm like oh I wish I'd put this there or I wish I'd put another element here but the trouble is once it's done it's done and I think that um, for me if I watch a video of someone creating something I don't really like the fact that I then look at the thumbnail and they've changed it and it's their right to change it I know it's their right to change it but maybe it's a little something I'd like to have seen them do so I tend to not do that I think I might have done it once or twice with the Marguerite Miller challenge because that was just, it was a complete experiment for me on my creativity and challenging myself to do something different. Now, any bits that hang over the edge of this, I'm going to trim afterwards. <clears throat> so we'll deal with that later. Now, as I said, I think the compass needs to be moved. And when I do what I'm doing up here, you'll see why. So I need to think, where would I put another compass? <clears throat> and if this one is partially seen at the end, that's also fine as well. So I, I'm sort of thinking down there would work, if it's right there, down there would work. Over there, I feel, will be better. Actually, I've just convinced myself it is over there. The question is, yes, I think it's a black one. Right, we're going to come in. I'm going to take this out and I'm probably going to tear this a little bit tighter than I did the one up there because obviously there's no white around, uh, there was white around that one. Now I do know obviously that you can use a water pen to run a line of water around a piece of tissue paper and it will tear far easier. I'm just being lazy. My water pen's only over there. Um, I don't know, I just feel like I want to do this. Um, there are a few other finishing touches I want to add to this when we get to that point. So um, it'll be less visible even then. So <clears throat> I'm sure I've got it the right way up. That's one thing about tissue paper because it's pretty much semi-transparent. I've stuck them the wrong way on before now. 
So, um, I do like the way that the stenciling worked. That that really came into being for me. I like the way the cuttle color cuttles cuttles. What the heck are cuttles? The colours were settled down in here. Um, I do like the fact that I've got that little bit of movement still with it. anything I brush over. As you'll see, it will pick up and pull in a little more of the colour, and I like that. So to me now, that's that's in a better place. I'd like it to be up there, but this I think is where it's going to be. Right, um, let's put a bit of a wet wipe over my mixed media stuff. And all I'm doing to save it drying out is literally... I've got that much left on there. I'm just going to stick a wet wipe over the top of the paintbrush and the mixed media, just so I'm not wasting it. I don't even know that I need it for the future, but I'm going to try and keep it anyway. So uh, the other thing I want to do is take this upwards. Now, if I remember correctly, it was ultramarine and it was turquoise I used. Now, I only want to put it in this area. If a little bit goes on there, so be it. But this is kind of where I want it. So. Got to be a little bit careful about this. Um, I'm wondering if I just do that and take a bit of washi tape just to stop the overspray. I don't mind if it runs a little onto it. I just don't want, I don't want a wonky line either. I just, I just don't want it contaminating the eagle basically. So we'll see. I'll, I'll try and do the best I can. So obviously, tiny, tiny little bits of this. I just need a little bit and I need it to be wet and I need it to run. So I was thinking last night I could probably do an entire journal, if not more than one journal, on my, my adventures in Alaska. I just... I know at this point you're probably going to go, oh, really? Alaska again? Yeah, Alaska again. I absolutely love Alaska. I, I just... Let's give that quite a bit of water because I want to get it to move on me. So I want to tilt the book. Sorry if it's not going to be perfectly in shot for you. But I just want a little bit more movement. I'm happy with what that is. And I just want to come in and dab that just so that if there is any on there, it's blended in. I don't particularly want that little bit blue there. So I'm just pull some of it out so that by dabbing it, I'm I'm lessening in the blah, 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 lessening the intensity of it. So I do quite like that. I'd like to just put a few extra squirts on there. See if I can just get it to. That's sort of what I want to do. It's always a bit hit and miss when you use water because it just doesn't feel like there's a lot of control in it. And sometimes there isn't. Okay, I'm happy with that. That sort of brings... I'm actually not happy with that. I want, I want a little bit more by here. And we are talking a little bit by here, so... Let me just put my hand over that just to... Probably saying it doesn't look like a lot of difference, but you'd be surprised at the subtlety you can add just by adding the odd little touch of something here and there. So I don't like the way that's flecked there. Let's see whether I can remove that. I think maybe a fresh bit of kitchen paper would help. Right, I think that's done. So, okay, let's. Let's talk about this area up here, shall we? Okay, this has been giving me a bit of angst because it's the one thing where I think if this this whole collage, um, this whole collage, if this whole art page is going to go wrong, this is where it's going to go wrong. The thing I haven't yet put on this page, which I've been a bit nervous about, is I haven't put darkness on the page. And by darkness, I mean literal darkness, nighttime, because obviously, although... The season I was seeing Alaska in was all beautiful and sunny and sometimes the sun never even dipped behind the horizon. There are months and months where it is completely dark and it was a whole dark side of Alaska which I never experienced. Um, so obviously for me that's black 
and I'm going to put purple into it too. And what I want to do is I want to do the brushos on it um, because there's something else I want to do over the top. So I'm adding a spritz of water just to basically hold stuff where it needs to be and to start the whole seeping process. Now, even though I've just said it's totally black, I do not want this totally black. I want this to be representative of darkness, but not necessarily absolutely pitch black, because even in the dead of night, there is colour. Well, there is, in my opinion, anyway. Right, uh, I want a bit of book page. Let's grab a bit of book page would be a good idea. Just to protect this side. Um, just to give me a little bit of protection there. And I want to just spritz this so that it becomes very fluid. And I want to move this around a bit too. I want to try and keep this on the move. Now I'm going to sponge off the top. Well, not sponge I'm going to take the top off this with my kitchen towel in a moment um, because I don't want all of the grains in there and I want to keep it localized to where it is. It's probably then not going to be as dark once, once I've sponged it off. And there is a reason for this and I'll explain when I, I get my head around how I'm doing it. So I'm just going to come in with a bit of kitchen towel, kitchen paper. Well, it would be the last one on the roll, wouldn't it? Kitchen towel, kitchen paper. Come on, off you go. The last sheet is always the pain. So I'll use that for mopping up. I've got another one here. Right, so I'm just going to come in. I'm literally going to roll over the top of that and take a lot of it away. Now, as you can see, I've taken the majority of that away. I've also <laughs> wrecked half a roll of kitchen towel with it, but there you go, we'll sort that out as we go along. So I've now got that on there. I want to go in now with another layer of something just to bring that into darkness even further. And I'm wondering if I want to do some black crayon. Now I've got these distress crayons, which are water reactive. And I think I want to just put some of this in because I'll be able to control this a little better than I would if I used um, the brushes again. So Just add a little drama up there, should we call it. Um, let's do a spritz of this and get myself a brush, right. Just trying to move this round, just to get this liquefied. I don't actually know what these crayons are made of, but whatever they are, they're very clever. So just to get it liquefied so that I don't have the marks where it's been drawn on. Let's put that to one side. Um, and then a little bit more water should get that moving as well. And there does seem like a lot of water on this, and there is. I mean, I'm a little bit nervous about how much I'm using, but it's the effect I want. And, you know, you've got to be brave sometimes. I think that's probably enough moving that I want around there. Let's take some of these off the edges. Now, I'm going to... Let that dry, I think. I don't I don't want it black, 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 as I've said. So maybe if I try and just take some of the excess away. I want the feel of darkness. I don't necessarily want dark, dark. And you're probably all looking going, what the heck is he doing? Right, I think that's it, right. Um, I'm going to stop the video now for no other reason than this needs, this needs some serious drying time. Um, I'm going to hit this with my hairdryer just to dry this out a bit um, because I can't do the next bit until this is totally dry. So here we are back again. Um, it's totally dry. 
Um, I must admit, I put a thin layer of um, matte medium over the top just because I don't want this colour bleeding through to what I'm about to put on the top. Which brings me to the next point. Okay, I have been very lucky and privileged in my life to have seen the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis many, many times and they are truly, truly magical. So, I kind of had an idea which could be the ruin or the making of this. So as I said, I, I took a bit of mylar, which is this plastic stuff, and I just cut it with a Tim Holtz little scissors. Um, I then cut these sections a little bit shorter because they look too tall, and I'm going to use these um, as the start of an idea. So bear with me because, as I said, this could go really, really wrong or it could go really, really right. So I'm going to put this one to one side. We're going to be using this one. Now I'm going to use them as a mask. Um, and I'm going to need to, sorry, my, I always stick bits of spare washi tape down, down on my, um, cup there. So just so I've got something, so I'm just going to hold those in place. Hopefully that won't grab and pull up the artwork underneath. Now I debated long and hard about how do I represent the colors of it. And I've got, I bought a box of metallics a while ago, the pearlized ones. Um, it was a box of, I can't remember how many is in there, however many is in my hand here. Um, because what I like to do is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. What I like to do is if I'm trying out new things like these metallics, I tend to buy a box of the small ones. And then if there's one I really, really love, when I run out, I'll buy the bigger version. So that's what I'm doing. So what I want to do is... Um, Let's put this to one side. Um, when you see Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights, it's almost like stripes coming down, but then it almost has like a fabric effect along the bottom. Just, um, to me, it's just magical. So, and I thought, right, the only way I can do that, probably get the translucency, the, the just the sheer feel of it is through metallic. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to choose as so I'm going to work Across here, I'm going to put the smallest little bit of each of these down on here and see whether I can. I've got an idea. I'm going to try and smear it upwards um, to give me that, that look that I'm going for, but I don't know whether it's going to work. Um, the colours I'm using are possibly not true to the colours that you'd find within it, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I, I just want... I, don't know, I just want to capture the feel of it. Um, it is magical, and if you ever have a chance to see them, oh my goodness, don't don't miss out on that opportunity, please. Just just find them, go for them, look at them. They're just absolutely amazing. As I said, I'm not sure this is going to work, guys. So if it doesn't, I'll be a little upset because I really like where this is going. So. Uh, let's put in a different colour. There are just so many colours and it keeps changing. I remember once um, when we were on the cruise ship, we used to announce to the passengers if it was likely that we would see um, the Northern Lights. So, and they'd give them roughly an idea of what time in the morning or night that we were likely to see them. So, um, the other thing I've got, by the way, is I've just got some card that was wide enough for me to smear this up with. Although, looking at it, it's not wide enough, is it? But then I flip it over and use the other side. Um, I'm just going to move these along a bit, just so that there's... I need a bit of out of my hand, so it's not an unbroken line. Um, so, yeah, and I remember there was this one magic night, and it was magic. Uh, it was about two o'clock in the morning and we hadn't announced that there was going to be the Northern Lights because sometimes you don't know. The conditions are right and sometimes they just happen. Um, and it was about, it's got to be about two or three in the morning, I think it was. And I woke up and I just, when I wake up, I can't just lie in bed. So I thought, right, let's just go up on deck and get some fresh air and I walked out on deck and oh my god it was the most amazing display it was almost as if the ship was completely encased in this curtain and I was up there for an hour and people must have been woken by it as well and came out it was just 
it was I've got goose pimple the hairs on my arms are sticking up thinking of it it was just absolutely stunning right before this dries I'm going to press this down and smear directly upwards and let's pray for me on this one because I don't know whether this is going to work I'm going to turn this over and do it again on this side and a little bit more on that one I know there's a bit of paint on the other side of this right let's see whether I can get Right, so that's that bit of card dealt with. So that's that bit done. So I'm going to take that away. You can see now where I, what I was aiming for. I'm going to keep these stencil or mask pieces because I never know when I'm going to use them again. I'm probably not going to do the Aurora Borealis again. However, um, I might use those because they're in an interesting shape. Right, I now need to dry that because what I want to do is I want to do the same thing again. But... Um, in a different arrangement of colours to go up further. So, and, and then what I'm going to do is probably dry brush upwards with some white. So we'll try and get the translucency of it through. So bear with me, going to pause you a minute and then I'm going to dry this and come back to you. So here I am back again. It's completely dry. Now as you can see, it gives me this metallic sheen to it, which is the way I wanted to represent that. Just that feel of it, really. So now where do I put the other half of that mask? Oh, I put it some there you go so what I want to do is I want to use a separate piece in the opposite direction because if you ever see them they sort of come in waves this way and then they're overlapped by another one in that they they just they're layer upon layer so I thought right if I do this in the opposite direction um in a different color I can take it on as I said I'm probably going to dry brush white over the top of it afterwards um just to give that um, almost a streaked feel to it, um, just so that it's got, I don't know, I'm just trying to, trying to make this work, guys, and I'm not really sure how to make it work. So, right, I quite liked the fact that I had some darker colours, and I want to put some lighter colours over the top of those. So, and I think I can be a bit braver with the amount of paint this time, because I can, I can drag it up a little bit further. Um, so I'm trying to choose where the darker colours are. Just to put some lighter ones in their place. Um, and why is that blue gone? There you go. I wanted some more of that blue because I really like the blue in there. And I could possibly be put in a couple of places. I didn't put silver in the first one, so I'm going to put some silver in this one. At the end of the day, guys, if this doesn't work or hasn't worked, what have I wasted? I've just wasted some time and energy. I've told you a story. I've, I've learned what doesn't work, which is sometimes more important than learning what does work. Now, I had that paler pink. I like that paler pink in there. So I want a bit more of that in there. And I quite liked a little bit of the gold. Just little hints of it. I think that's going to be make or break time guys. So right, paint away. Let's get the scraper thingy right. Cross your fingers, guys. Let's see what this looks like. So let's just come in. I'm pressing down quite firmly. I'm just going to use the same side again. I quite like the idea of that that needed more there. So let's just... have a little bit of a look at that okay that's kind of okay I'm okay with that I can't say that was a complete disaster there's one or two areas I'd like to put a little bit more in so I'm just going to come in and just freehand those bits okay that's that's not perfect it's not horrible and I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
first of all, clean my fingers. Um, I'm going to dry this off totally, clean the stencils or the, um, the masks that are made, because what I'm thinking of doing is when I do the dry brushing, maybe I need to dry brush with the stencils in place. That way um, I might have a bit of that definition of a line of white, which also works for me. I think I'm liking that. Now there's going to be some more white on here anyway, so I'm just getting out the bits that are actually just a bit weird. So, okay, bear with me, need to stop the camera, need to have a big old clean up on our line here, and then I'm going to come back in with the white and see whether I can make what I thought work, work, if all that makes sense. So see you in a second, guys. Okay, guys, here we are. The sun is absolutely brilliantly bright at the moment. I do apologise, but I'm not going to apologise for sunshine, not in Wales. So this is dry. Um... I'm happy with the shininess of it because it gives that sort of feel to it. As I said, I do want to dry brush this in white now, just to give it a bit of something extra. So I want to bring in the pieces that actually fitted whichever shapes. Which one was it? Wasn't that one? It was this one. Right, I just want to. Put them in place, stick them down with a little bit of washi tape as I did before. If I can pull the washi tape up, if I can. I'm having washi tape issues, people. There you go. So just put that down. Now I'm going to bring in a bit of book page. Let's put it on here because you can see it. I've got a fan brush with me. Now this is just regular white acrylic paint. And what I want to do is I want to have upward streaks of this, but I want to do it almost as if it's dry brushed. Um, because I don't want it to look, I don't want it to look white. I want it to look like that curtain effect I told you about. Um, also, I think once I've done this, I'm going to make the top edge darker. So hoping this is going to work it's it's the effect I want is that is that almost stripey effect and I won't know what it looks like until I actually take take the stencil away um, or the mask now what I'm thinking of doing is once this is completely dry I might go in with a white paintbrush and paint that line in there you go. See, that that to me is more than I was looking for. Right, OK, this is going to work. I'm happy about that. Right, there you go. Let's put that. And I might not need to go in and draw that line in. Right, where did I put those bits of washi tape? Stick these down. Yeah, the sun keeps coming and going. It's still a winter's day here, obviously, because we're still in March. However, I do feel spring might just be on its way, guys. I really do. I'm trying to be positive about that. So just come in. Now the reason I did the top one first and the bottom one second is because I want to try and get that, that effect that they're overlaying each other. As I said, I don't even know I don't even know whether this was going to work, so hopefully it does. I mean looking at that, that's much more the effect that I saw. I wonder if I brush down first, whether that will give me a bit of a catchment of the white on the edge of here. I'm just nervous of putting too much on because I don't want to obliterate what there is there. Let's take that off. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for, I think. I'm going to actually come in and do stripes up the whole whole section of the page. I just want that whole, I don't know, I don't know word, a word I'm trying to find for it. So let's take that and I'll take a wet wipe and take that off there because I don't like that bit. Come on you, out you come. 
I still have trouble getting wet wipes out of packages. So. Okay, that's kind of what I was going for. I will paint that edge on there, I think, afterwards. I'm going to have to stop the camera to do that because I need to get right above it. And if I do that with the camera, you're just going to see the back of my head anyway. Right. Um, I wanted to put into this... So lift those up out of the way. I wanted to put into this some black now. Um, I wanted to bring that black back in and bring it down. And I think the way I want to do that is I want to take some black acrylic paint, wherever it is, there it is, and I want to put it on with a wet wipe. I I don't want to. I don't want to brush it on. I want to put it on almost almost like a circular motion, and only a little bit. I just want to. Bring that darkness in that I said I wanted to enter it into. I mean, I do find doing stuff like this exciting because I never know what's going to happen. But sometimes it doesn't happen in the way you wish it would. So it can be exciting and stressful all at the same point. I just want to make sure that we've got that darkness happening. And I've got a feeling I want to... Actually, that's better. Just trying to bring it down and then pull it back up so that the top of everything is... I'll pull it down a bit there because I don't mind that. I, I'm glad I moved the, the compass over to the other page because obviously it's not there anymore. Now let's take a little bit of this and see if I can try and get that. It's almost like a feathering effect. Okay, I'm kind of liking where that's going. So I'm sounding uncertain because I'm just... Well, I'm uncertain, really. I'm not sure. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to replicate something that I know that I will never be able to replicate. Um, because I'm not that sort of artist. I'm, I'm just trying to provoke a memory. Let's put it that way for myself. And I am provoking a memory with this. This, this does feel... It does feel right. Yeah, I think I think I can deal with that. I'm dabbing more than stroking now because because it just feels like the right thing to do. Okay, I think that I don't know what that looks like through the camera because I can't see through the camera, obviously. Right. So I need to paint those in, but it needs to be let to dry first. Um, I want to put some white splatters in here as if it's it's foam. Um, I'm looking at this thinking this is a little bit white for me and I'm wondering whether I just want to maybe wonder whether I want to put some brush -os on that just to hmm should I bring the marine blue in let's just put that down there There's a few grains of that on there Let's see whether I can just run a paintbrush over the top of this. Well, it soaked straight in, didn't it? Of course, I'm on book page. I'm not on a tile or anything. I'll just... That's better. I just wanted something. I'm wondering whether that needs it as well. I think that'll be all right. God, this sun is bright, isn't it? So, right, I think we're getting there. Right, I said I wanted to put white splatters on here. There's, there's a couple of things I don't want white splatters on. So, let's put this over this because I wouldn't see foam on the Aurora Borealis. Um, just put that on there, let's get another piece. 
I'm going to just cover up the eagle because I don't want the eagle tainted otherwise. Anyways, I, I as well. <laughs> right, I'm just using distressing uh, the spray distress spray stain by Ranger Tim Holtz, and all I do is I'm just taking it out. I've got all the grungy bits that just fell out, and I'm just going to do some splatters just from. I didn't mean to put that big of a blob right by there. That'll be all right. Just see if I can tidy that bit up. I don't want that left there. So, I mean, I tend to do splatters with this tube because I find that if I actually try and spray this spray, it's just too much. It goes all over the place for me, and that's not the look I'm looking for. I think I will lift this up just ever so slightly. And maybe over to a bit because I wouldn't mind a bit on there. Right, so that would be the foam. The foam from the water or the ocean or whatever you want. That bit there is a bit of paint crud. There you go. Right, so I said I want to paint that bit in there. Now, a funny thing happened when I was sorting through some of the stuff for this while, while I was letting this dry. And what happened was a word fell out of my box. And it happens to be this word, calm. And actually, I wasn't going to put a word on here, but I quite like the idea of a word on here now. Now, where it needs to go, how it needs to be, I don't know. Um... And I don't know whether that's the right word or not, but I'm thinking that I would like to put a word on here now. Um, I wouldn't want to be so literal that I put the word Alaska on here. Um, but I don't know, this, this just kind of appeals to me. Um, the thing that doesn't appeal to me is it's so white. Now, I quite like it. I'm thinking I like it this way instead, because that sort of leads everything up. I want to work out, though what I can do on the edge of it. Right, let's see what vintage photo looks like on there for a start. I mean, the trouble is with vintage photo because it's um, a distress ink, it's going to be water reactive. So when I put, um, when I put the mixed media medium on top, it's going to um, reactivate it but I mean I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing to be honest with you I can always go around this with a pen as well but I do think I quite like the idea of that just I like the expanse of that I don't think it takes away from from that I quite like that um, Part of me is also wondering whether I want to put that stencil across there as well, because it seems to be lacking something. And I don't know whether it's the stencil that I want to put up there. Let me just grab it back again and have a little look. And I'm wondering whether I want to continue that design across, across there. Now, the thing is, if I stencil on there, what it's going to do is it's probably going to soak some of the colour through. Do I mind that? I do not mind that. This is looking very, very busy though, I must admit. Right, I think I like that, so I'm gonna put that down. Right, let's make a decision there. So I'm just gonna come in, and I'm gonna put this on with my matte medium. That's what I meant to call it before. If I forgot to call it matte medium, you'll know what I mean. So, just put that down on there. Now, um, as this is from a magazine page, I did, paint the piece with matte medium before I actually stuck it on. So I let it paint it with matte medium to seal it. Then I let it dry. And then I've just painted matte medium on the top of it to stick it down. And the reason I do that is because sometimes it stops it rippling as much. Actually, I quite like the fact it's got some streaks in it. I like that. Right. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, 
still unsure what I want to do and what I don't want to do. But what I've decided is I don't like the way that's patchy. So I'm going to actually bring in some archival and using one of these brushes and see if I can blend this into more of a subtle change. It's, it's the brush marks, I think, that are really annoying me. That I did paint in the lines on here, which was fine. I just feel that this just... I don't know what it is about this up here that's just not working for me. And I don't know whether I'm just trying to make it black black and I don't need it black black. Or whether I just want to make it a bit dense. It feels like there's an expanse of something up there that I don't like the look of. Um, I've been through words, I've been through other stencils. Um, I just don't know, I can't, I can't work out what that needs, which is, sometimes the struggle is real people. I really, I'm gonna put this by now. Um, okay, I've got one of these white Posca pens, paint pens. Oh, I can't get the lid off, there you go. Um, I've got a bit of an idea, a risky one. But a bit of an idea. I'm wondering whether that just needs some fake sort of journaling done on it. And by fake I mean not real words, just like a meditational script type thing. Um, and I think I just need to be brave and do it. So okay what I'm going to be writing, let's take that one out, we don't need that there. What I'm going to be writing is absolute gobbledygook. No one is going to know what it is. I'm just going to make up words along there and see whether it brings some sort of character to this. Um, and if it does, I might bring it into another area. So I don't know, guys. I'm just going to go for this. Just pretending I'm writing something. It could be... Um, a detail. It just... I, I don't know. It's just... I'm going with my gut feeling. I like doing this sort of stuff because, personally, I have horrible handwriting anyway. So this probably looks more interesting than my handwriting. Um, and as I said, don't try and read it because it doesn't mean anything. It could be the elfin language for all we know. It could be some mystical alien language that no one's ever seen before or heard of. But it could be that little bit of visual detail I just need. I quite like that along there. I think I want to bring it down a little bit here because as I said to me um, the northern lights are magical so maybe this is a mystical language. Let's just put another word in there. Right, I quite like that. Okay we're going in the direction I hadn't really planned. Um, Quite like a bit of that here as well. So let's turn this around. Let's get that old bit of paint out of the way. I'm going to go in another direction here so that... Now you're probably saying why aren't I writing in black on this area? Maybe I don't want it to be seen as much. Okay, that's kind of working for me. And I think down here, let's get rid of the paint stuff probably needs a bit too. Um, I have been asked whether I'd make a digital of this sort of symbols or writing. Um, and I think I will actually. I'm, I'm thinking about doing a version in maybe black and a version in brown and I'll, I'll scan them onto white background so then you can print them onto whichever colour paper you want. Actually, I'm not upset by that. I'm, I'm okay with that. Let's take that out of the way. Um, okay, that's feeling better. Um, okay, I'm feeling okay about that up there. Um, wasn't really sure what I was expecting, but there you go. Right, let's pull in... I'm going to pull in a couple of permanent pens. This is the brush one. How wide is that? Um, What's this? this? Is an eight. I want to give this a bit of a outline too. I think maybe this is very much a case of this page needs black. 
So I'm just doing a bit of a double squiggly line around this purely because it needs something. Okay, liking that better. Okay, I'm getting there. Um, I had a black Posca pen. Where did I put the black Posca pen? I think this is it. Yes, see how wide this is. I think that's too wide for what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this needs something around here because it, it's as if your eyes led off the page. Um, what would I put up there if I put anything up there? Maybe if I just drew a line. Um, just a squiggly line just to define that one. Um, Actually, I don't want to put it there, it will block things. I think, guys, I, I want to say we're done. Yeah, I think the eagle for me really represents um, Alaska along with the whale. This represents the Inuit people. Um, this is sort of a hint at their style. This reminds me of the islands. I think they're called Ingots. I think they called it the little islands. Groups of islands, I think, are called ingots. Could be wrong with that one. With the little houses, I was also jealous on. This represents my travels. This word here is what Alaska makes me feel. Um, it was all surrounded by my musical career, my dancing and my singing and everything else. This kind of represents the journaling, which I didn't really journal when I was on the ship, to be honest. What a pity. I would have made great journals. Um, this reminds me of the Aurora Borealis. This blue just reminds me of not the ocean, but more the feel you see when ice changes the light, changes in the light. Um, the splashes, the white splatters are actually the foam. This represents the earth, the rich, deep, reddish earth there. And the night sky. I think we're done. Um, that was a lot more of a struggle than I thought that was going to be. I'm not 100% happy with this, but you know, sometimes you just need to leave things be. I like I like the fact that it's got a bit of a sheen to it. Um, and I need to understand that I am never, ever, ever, ever going to make the Aurora Borealis look like the Aurora Borealis. And I didn't want to stick a photograph in there. So there you go. That's that. So I think all it needs me to say is goodbye really so i'm kerry the crafter that's c-e-r-i the crafter i hope you've enjoyed this um i think this is going to grow on me at the moment i'm not 100 percent satisfied but it does invoke memories and invoking memories is what the aim of this was for anyway so until next time you take care bye bye now